Alright, uh, in this video, I'm going to summary for you uh, how to find the arguments of a complex number in four uh, in the four different quadrant, right? Uh, so let's look at this uh, question here. So you have the z. Okay, how to find argument for this? Very simple. Okay, I I make a conclusion for you here. So means that first you draw the axis. Okay, you draw the argon diagram. Then you have to locate. You have to know where is the. This is the uh, real axis, right? Real axis, and this is the imaginary axis, right? Uh, so for this one over two and positive, both are positive. So means this is your x. So this will be one over two, uh, one over two. The real part, the real axis, the imaginary will be square root of three over two. Uh, so you know that this will be on the first, uh, on the. Uh, First quadrant, right? It's on the first quadrant in the argon diagram. So, and where else for this? Uh, so, I want to do a comparison so that you have a better picture of how to find the argument. So, all right. So, this is a real. So, this is a real axis, real z, and this is the imaginary axis. So, for this, uh, for this, the will be negative one or two. Okay, uh, negative one or two will be the negative axis. And positive square root of three over two, so means that this is the point, right? Uh, so location for the complex number here. So this is your, uh, so this is the argon diagram, right? Argon diagram for this. So and where else for this one? Same thing also. Everything. Uh, now this is in the second quadrant, right? Second quadrant. So and this is your uh, imaginary axis, the real axis. So okay, the most important is where is the location, right? Uh, so this is the one over two, positive one over two, negative. Okay, negative. The y positive here is negative, so negative with square root of three over two. Uh, so this will be the argon diagram for this complex number. Okay, I represent this argon diagram, and this will be in the fourth quadrant, right? The fourth quadrant. So how will this affect the argument, right? Uh, with different quadrants. So this is the most important that I want to talk about in this video. So real z, the imaginary part of z. So for this negative 1 or 2, negative 1 or 2, and negative square root of 3 or 2. Uh, so in the uh, so this is the this in the first quadrant, second quadrant, and this in the fourth quadrant, and this in the third quadrant, right? So how to evaluate this? As you know that argument, uh, you have to know that argument argument only can take values, uh, argument theta is only can take values between negative pi and pi, right? Uh, between negative pi and so since uh, this and this sharing the same axis, so you can just include you just take one of them, either one of them, pi uh, or negative pi. So this is all the value that can be accepted in the radian form. So, okay, let's look at the first one, the first quadrant. So where is the argument, right? Uh, the argument will be in the first quadrant, right? Uh, this will be your argument. Uh, this will be your argument. Then how about the argument for this, right? How about the argument for this? The argument for this will be from the positive axis going to this line here. Uh, so this will be the argument for this complex number. Uh, so later on we will teach you how to find the value. Uh, this will be the argument here. Okay? Uh, so how about the argument for this? Right? Can you go from here to here? Uh, can you move in in uh, anti-clockwise? Right? Anti-clockwise, counter-clockwise? Cannot, right? Cannot. Because if you're moving in clockwise, uh, in anti-clockwise, you are getting a value of uh, argument, the, the angle here will be more than 180. Uh, you know that it just can be between pi is 100, pi is equivalent to 180, right? It just can take value between negative 180 and 180, right? So you cannot move it in this direction here. So you have to move it clockwise instead. You have to move it clockwise. So this will be the argument. Uh, so this will be the argument for this complex number. It cannot move it this way, so you have to go in this way. So means that this is a negative angle here. Uh, this is a negative angle because it's moving clockwise. Right? Uh, how about this? Uh, 
uh, what is the argument here? So you cannot move in this way. Why? Because this is 180 plus. Right? Means that more than 180. So I have to go in here, right? Uh, this direction here. So uh, this will be the argument for this complex number, which is located in the third quadrant here. Uh, so first you have to identify where is the argument. Uh, the most important is where is the argument, right? First, are you able to uh, understand this? Are you able to know that where is the argument? So now, after that, we may need the help of alpha, right? Uh, alpha in finding the uh, right. We meet, We may need to know the reference angle for each right? uh, reference angle. For example, uh, this itself is the reference angle, right? It's a acute angle here. So how to find the argument? Uh, the correct way of finding the argument here will be directly. You can finding the uh, up tangent, up tangent of the modulus. I right? always take the positive value here of the y divided by the x. Uh, y divided by the x here. x plus yi, right? Uh, the complex number z equals to x plus yi. x plus yi. So x plus yi. So how to doing this? First, you know that up tangent of y divided by x. The y will be square root 3 over 2 divided by 1 over 2. Right. So by using uh, your calculator, so you will be getting uh, this to be square root of 3. Uh, so up tangents of square root of 3, positive, you are getting the value of 60. Right. In degree, it will be 60. So in radian form, it will be pi over 3. Right. Uh, it will be pi over 3. So this clearly know that the angle here will be pi over 3. Pi over 3. And this will be the argument, uh, exactly. This will be the argument for this complex number here. Uh, the argument. So means that z, uh, sometimes the data here, we name it as argument of z. Right? Uh, argument of z. So argument of z, or we say theta, will be the same as pi over 3 for this, uh, the first complex number. Right. Okay, let's move on with the argument for this, which is in the second quadrant here. Uh, so how to find this? So, okay, definitely you want to find the angle. You want to find the obtuse angle here. You have to find the reference angle here. Usually we denote this by alpha because it's in the second quadrant, right? Uh, we have to find the value of alpha before we can find the argument, right? This is your argument. Uh, you want to find the argument here. So, okay, to find the value of alpha, we always using this formula. Uh, so, up tangent of always putting the modulus, alright? Always putting the modulus. Uh, so, because we want to know the acute angle here, right? Uh, so, and we're just taking the y. Uh, just taking the y. So, the y, which is square root of 3 over 2, divided by negative 1 over 2. Uh, the positive or negative doesn't matter because once you put modulus, it will become positive. Uh, so, it will be getting square root of 3. Modulus square root of 3 is actually square root of 3, right? It's the same. So, you are still getting pi over 3 here, right? Pi over 3 here. Uh, so, first we find this, uh, if this is obtuse. So, we are finding the alpha. So, the alpha here, here will be pi over 3, right? Uh, pi over 3. So, how to find the argument here, right? Uh, the argument here. So, you must do based on your understanding. The argument here. Uh, the argument, or we said the argument of z is the same as uh, this one, the, the color, the yellow color here, right? The, the, uh, the argument will be you taking, it's a straight line, 180 in radian will be pi, right? Uh, you're taking pi, pi, minus away, pi minus away, the alpha here, right? Uh, so that you can find the argument here. So, will be pi over 3. Pi minus with pi over 3, right? Uh, so you are getting 2 pi over 3. Uh, this will be the argument for this complex number. Okay, let's look at this. Alright, okay, let's look at this. Uh, so this will be in the fourth quadrant, right? In the fourth quadrant. So same thing also, we usually were finding the alpha, okay? Uh, we 
finding the alpha as we want to know the angle here, right? So we just find the alpha, uh, finding the alpha. So the y, y over x. Okay, only for the first quadrant we never talk about alpha. Uh, the rest of this, which is the second quadrant, the third quadrant, fourth quadrant, we talk about alpha. Okay, uh, alpha will be y. Uh, will be negative square root of three over two divided by one over two. So up uh, tangent. And you divide by this, you are getting negative square root of 3. Once you modulus, you are getting square root of 3. You are still getting pi over 3. Right? Uh, you are still getting pi over 3. Uh, pi over 3 is the value here. Uh, it's the value here. Right? It's the value here. But the argument is not pi over 3. The argument is not pi over 3. The argument of that is not pi over 3. It will be a mistake if you put pi over 3. Uh, the difference between this and this will be this one is going counterclockwise and this is going clockwise. In trigonometry, going clockwise, you have to put a negative here. Right? Uh, negative pi over 3. Uh, this is something that you should remember. All right? Rather than memorize formula, you know why is it negative here. All right? Because it's going in this direction now. Uh, the negative angle. So, how about the last one? Right? Uh, the last one. So, same thing also for this, you know that for this they were going in this direction. So the angle also will be negative. But we have to find the magnitude of this angle first by finding the alpha here. Uh, by finding the alpha here. Alright? Uh, this one, the alpha itself is this, right? So how to find this? The alpha, the arc tangent of negative square root of 302. The y divided by the x negative 1 over 2. Uh, you are still getting positive square root of 3. Okay? Uh, so you are still getting pi over 3. Uh, pi over 3. So it means that the value of here is pi over 3. Mm, pi over 3. So it's same like this one. See? Pi over 3 also. Uh, but now you want to find the argument. This is the one that this is the argument, not this, right? Not this. Uh, in this quadrant. You have to move from this axis going to the this line, right? So the argument here will be theta, or we said the argument of z will be the. Uh, you have to find the alpha. Alpha, you have already found the alpha, right? You want to find this angle here. So how? You have to take the pi because you know this is a straight line, right? It's a straight line. So you're taking the pi minus the pi over three, pi over three, and you're getting two pi over three. Uh, this is still. A mistake here. What's the mistake? Because you're going in this direction, right? In this direction. So you have to put a negative here, right? A uh, negative. So there is a negative here. Negative 2 pi over 3. Because even though this and this have the same size, uh, one is going counterclockwise. That's why positive. And one is going clockwise, right? Uh, so this will be, that's why you have to put a negative for this argument here. So now you have to know how how to how to find the argument in different quadrants, right? Without memorizing formula, okay? Uh, so definitely for four of these, you see the value here will be the same. The x y the, the the magnitude of the x and y will be the same, right? So definitely the uh, the modulus will be the same. So if you want to find the modulus, or we say uh, the modulus of or we using the r. Okay, R to represent the modulus of the complex number, it will be the same. Everything here will be 1 over 2 squared, 1 over 2 squared plus 3, square root of 3 over 2 squared. Right? Uh, so, and if you're adding up this, negative 1, negative 1 over 2 squared plus with negative square root of 3 squared, you are still getting the same value, right? All of this, the modulus of Z will be the same. Right, will be the same, but the argument will be different, uh, which gives to different polar form. Right? Uh, so in this one, I just want to teach you how to find the argument. Alright, that's all for this.